Now we're going to get a little more involved in solving for our unknown value or our variable. So when we are trying to solve an equation, we follow the rules of PEMDAS, okay? Get clear on all the parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide, then add and subtract. Well, if we're trying to solve for the variable, we actually need to do that in the opposite order. We need to do what I refer to as ZAGMEP, um, starting with addition and subtraction, finding all instances of that, clearing it out, and then dealing with any multiplication or division after that. Um, and then the EP really doesn't apply so much to this. Okay, so our number one goal when we are trying to do these things is isolate the variable. We need it. If there's an equal sign, the variable is on one side and all numbers are on the other. Okay? And so our first step would be to get rid of anything on the side of the variable that is not touching the variable. This is going to be usually addition or subtraction. So we can clear those out. Then, once there's nothing left on the side of the variable but the number touching the variable, then we can worry about canceling it out on both sides. And then that lets us find out the solution to our equation. So if we have this as an example, our goal is to get x by itself. Well, because there's two terms on this side, our goal is to then just get the x term by itself. What's in the way of the x term being alone? This subtract 7. So then I have to perform the opposite operation of that, which is addition. So I'm then going to add 7 to both sides. It cancels out here, leaving me with 5x. And then 4 and negative 4 and positive 7, my signs are different, so I have to find the difference. 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. And my positive was larger than my negative, so that is a positive 3. Now my, now my goal is to get x by itself. And the way to do that is I have a 5 multiplying by x, so I have to do the opposite operation on both sides, which means divide by x. That cancels out, and it turns into x equals 3. 3 fifths. It's always good to double check and verify that that is the correct answer by plugging it in. I have 5 times 3 fifths minus 7 leaving me with negative 4. Is this true? Well, I turn the whole number into a fraction. These canceled me out, leaving me with a positive 3. If I have a positive 3 and a negative 7, does that equal negative 4? Yes, it does. So 3 fifths is the solution to this equation. Okay, so again, my goal is to isolate x. To start with, I'm just going to want to isolate my x term. I deal with taking the number off of the x last, very last step. I deal with anything else on this side first. I have an instance of subtraction, so to clear that out, I need to add it to both sides. That cancels out. I have 13 here and a negative 4x. I have nothing else to do other than get this negative 4 off of the x in order to isolate x. Currently it is a multiply, so to isolate it, I need to divide by negative 4 on each side. So if I have a 13, oop, I almost dropped my negative sign, make sure to not do that. Um, 13 divided by a negative 4 is just negative 13 fourths. Now is there anything I can divide out of 13 that I can also divide out of 4 to reduce it? Well 13 is a prime number. The only thing I can evenly divide out of it is 13, and 13 cannot create 4 to then be able to take it out, so nope, I'm done. Also, and as I've mentioned before, plug it in. Verify it. Just because it's a fraction, don't be afraid of it. Go ahead and plug it in and make sure, does this make sense? So if I have a negative 4 um, being multiplied by a negative 13 fourths, Minus 2 equals 11. Now, you should also, by looking at this, have a hint that I have a negative here and a negative here, but I have a positive answer here. That means if I'm taking 2 away from something, I need this to be a really big positive number to take 2 away and still get a positive 11. So that means this negative 4 is going to have to also get multiplied by a negative number to turn positive. So that could let you double check that your signs were correct. Uh, so then if we proceed, we got, three, so we got that, this turns into, put that over 1, 
Those cancel out. A negative times a negative is a positive, and then I just have 13 over 1, which is just 13. So 13 minus 2, is that 11? Yes, it is. So negative 13 fourths is the solution. When it comes to equations with fractions, we have a couple different ways we can do it. We can keep everything as a fraction, or there's a way to actually clear the fractions out so that we're just dealing with whole numbers. It might work out that we end up having a fraction as our final answer, but we're at least not working with fractions within the problem. So the way to do that is, when I have an equation, it only works with equations, not expressions, I look at what would my lowest common denominator be? Well, if I have a 3 and a 5, the first number that they both create is going to be 15. So what I can do is I can multiply the entire equation by 15. This is going to let me create whole numbers to work with. So 15 times 1 third just means I go 15 divided by 3, okay? Because I have 15 1 third of a time. So 15 divided by 3 turns into 5 x plus 15 divided by 5, because I'm looking for 1 fifth of 15. I can do the, the long-winded way of going like this, meaning like, oh, let me cross-cancel 1 and 3, and I just get 3 over 1, which is 3. Shortcut, just take our whole number, divide it by our denominator, especially when it's just 1. Okay, so 15 divided by 5 is 3. So each fifth of a value means I have 3, and then 15 times a negative 4. Well, positive times a negative is a negative. If I have 15 twice, I have 30, and if I double that, then I have 60. So this is going to be 60. Now i got whole numbers. Woohoo! And then we do our sad math. Find all addition and subtraction, cancel that out, then find all multiplication and division, and cancel that out. I have addition right here. Let's cancel it out by subtracting by 3. A negative, two negatives, means I actually get to add those together and keep the same signs. Because if I owe 60 for something and I owe 3 for something else, I owe a total of 63. And here I have multiplication. So to get the multiplication off of there, I'm going to divide, divide. That cancels out. X equals negative 63 fifths. Now you might see that and be like, what? Do? Let's just go ahead and do it anyways. So it's really good to verify by plugging in that solution in for your x. Did I do my math right? Okay, well, let's find out. I had to pause for a second there because I realized I erased the answer and forgot what it was for a second. Okay, so I had one third times negative 63 fifths. Okay, and then if I added one fifth to it, I'm supposed to get a total of negative four. Well, three and 63 are both divisible by three, so I can cancel a three out of a three, leaving me with one, and six divided by three is a two, Three divided by three is a one. So this turns into negative 21 fifths. And then I need to add one fifth. Well, because my signs are different, I almost thought I did the math wrong. I didn't. Uh, because my signs are different, I actually have to find the difference between 21 and one, which is 20. And so this is 20 over 5, and I had more negatives than positives, so that's negative. Well, what is 20 divided by 5? It's negative 4. So, woohoo, we got the right solution. So here, I can look at what I have and kind of get a sense, an idea, a hint about what my answer should look like. I have an 8. But then when I combine it with this value, the 8 shrinks down to a 2. But this is positive. That lets me know I'm going to be looking for a negative number for my x. We do the same process as we've been doing. We find all addition and subtraction. Clear that out first. I have an add 8, so I subtract 8 from both sides. Positive 2, negative 8, different signs. Find the difference. I had more negatives than positives. So this turns into a negative 6. And 4 fifths 
x. So 4 fifths times something equals negative 6. So to get the 4 fifths off, I need to divide on both sides by 4 fifths. And when I do that, it means I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this. Reciprocal just means I've taken my fraction and I flipped it over. So um, I'm going to have x and it's going to equal negative 6 times the reciprocal, which is 5 fourths. This is how we divide fractions. So I will then turn this into a fraction. Notice that I can cross cancel by dividing by 2, leaving me with negative 3 times 5, which is going to be negative 15, over 1 times 2, which is 2. So negative 15 halves should be the solution. Let's plug it in and verify. I won't erase the answer this time. All right, so if I have 4 fifths, times a negative 15 halves. I can cross cancel, 2 turns into 1, 4 turns into 2, 5 turns into 1, 15 turns into 3, because I've reduced by 5, reduced by 2. Now I have 2 times a negative 3, which is negative 6, over 1 times 1, which is 1. Any number over a 1 is that number as a whole number, so negative 6, so if I have a negative 6 here, and I add it to 8, when I plug it in here, does that equal a positive 2? Yeah, 8 minus 6 is 2. So that's how we do two-step equations.